can post the study. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm live. I think I'm live. It's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, and it's 7 o'clock Pacific, uh, four no, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, 1 a.m. in Italy. My wife's in Italy, so I'll say hello to her there in Italy. Hi, honey. And um, uh, I'm here with you. Uh, you know, it's always a wonder, is there anybody out there? And it's always hard to tell. So let me get on my phone here so I can read any messages that come in or anyone that's out there while I'm doing this. Uh, so let's look for the live thing. Here we go. Is it? Uh, uh, oh, no, that's I'm on the wrong one. There's always something. Isn't there always something? So I'm on, um, uh, let's see, the wrong email. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go to the doctor.com. Here we go. There it is. I'm live. Good. Glad to see it. So if there's anyone out there or if I'm talking to myself, let me know. Oh, there are some people out there. How nice to see. Oh, my honey's the first one. Hi, honey. And Graham from Australia. Hey, Graham. Uh, Julie Wagoner. Hello, Julie. And Trisha. Uh, thanks, Tricia. Glad to know we're here. Martha, thank you so much. Um, so today's time, well, first I'll tell you, you know, I'm in Los Angeles today. I flew back. <laughs> Marzi says, quit fiddling. Okay. Uh, I flew back from Italy uh, two days ago, three days ago, and I just came off stage. I'm uh, Fran Drescher. Remember Fran Drescher? She was on a couple of weeks ago. Wow, what a what a show that was, wasn't it? I mean, you could hear a pin drop when she said someone broke into my house and I was raped at gunpoint. You could hear a pin drop in the room. Um, if you haven't seen that Facebook Live, I think it was three weeks ago. Go back and watch it. Because uh, and then she talked about how um, she's from New York. She's always been kind of a tough girl, and she can handle stuff, and so she can handle this and go on in her life and. A couple of days later, she was back to work and never talked about it. And a year later, she develops uterine cancer as a result of not dealing with the emotions. And for those of you who have gotten my new book, You Can Fix Your Brain, came out three weeks ago. Uh, number one on Amazon in seven different categories. It's like, yes, yes. You know that I write in the book about how critical it is the emotional or the spiritual side of the pyramid of health that you have to deal with that. And if you know what the problem is, you, of course, will deal with it. Most of us don't know what those problems are uh, when they happen. So anyway, Fran's event is today. And I shared the stage with my friend, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who wrote The End of Alzheimer's. I'm sitting down with Dale. We're waiting to go on stage, and he tells me his book has been now translated to 27 languages. 27. And I'm embarrassed to say, well, Dale, mine's in five, you know, so, which is great. I'm so grateful. Five languages. It's really great. Uh, uh, and Dr. Zach Bush was there and uh, 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 Robin Openshaw, Green Smoothie Girl, a uh, number of people on stage, Chris Shade from Quicksilver. Um, and Fran put this all together. She is passionate now about talking about functional medicine. So you can go to Cancer Schmancer. That's the name of her organization. I believe you can watch the uh, live stream of the event after the event. It's, uh, it ended just a few minutes ago. Uh, but So I'm back for that. And so I'm at a hotel here in Los Angeles and uh, happy to be with you guys here. So today's talk is about, or today's topic is how do you feel safe? going out to eat when you're working really hard to be gluten-free. Ah, Lynn's here from South Australia. Hello, Lynn. And Wanda Zerlo uh, from Long Island. Hi, Wanda. Mary and Glenda from uh, Moody, Texas. And that's an unusual name, isn't it? Moody, Moody, Texas. And Clarence Dolan's here and Elizabeth Rodriguez and Tracy from Houston. And thank you all. Uh, the list goes on. Ken Parodi's in Rome. Ciao, Kim. I just left Garda, uh, Riva de Garda, a couple days ago. Uh, Elizabeth from Brooklyn, and the list goes on and on. Thank you all so much, and thank you for being here. How do you feel safe when you're going gluten-free and you're going out to a restaurant? 
uh, that's the topic for today. And uh, the first thing we have to talk about is uh, why gluten-free? I think most people here already are on that bandwidth, but Fran asked me that question on stage today. Who has to be concerned about uh, going gluten-free? And the answer is everyone. When they cross the line of oral tolerance, so to make sure we're all on the same page, um, oral tolerance means when your body no longer will accept a minor irritant and let it slide by. And wheat is a minor irritant. Now, you've heard me say before, and the studies are very clear, studies out of Harvard and other locations, that every human gets intestinal permeability every time they're exposed to wheat. Every human, every time. And my little joke about that is so that if you're human, this means you. Every time you eat wheat, you get intestinal permeability. But Mrs. Patient, you have an entire new body every seven years. Every cell in your body regenerates, every cell. Some cells are very quick, like the inside lining of your guts every three to five days. Some cells are very slow. Bone cells, brain cells are slow. But every cell regenerates. So you eat toast for breakfast, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. You eat a sandwich for lunch, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. You eat pasta for dinner, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. Day after week after month after year, you've got tolerance for this minor amount of irritation until one day. That can be when you're two years old, 22 years old, 92 years old. One day, you don't heal anymore. And when you don't heal anymore, you've lost oral tolerance. That's called loss of oral tolerance. Then you get intestinal permeability, the leaky gut, and then these molecules get into the bloodstream of wheat and other food substances. Then your body makes the antibodies to wheat, and then it's permanent. And what determines oral tolerance? Oral tolerance in general is determined by how much work your immune system has to do to protect you. How much work do you have? If you guys have questions on this, send them in. Uh, because, uh, you know, type, type them in here and I'll, I'll answer them if I can because I want to make sure you guys get this. Because everyone gets intestinal permeability every time they eat wheat. The question is, does it heal or not? And at some point, you lose oral tolerance and it doesn't heal. And Fran asked me today on stage, she says, well, does that happen for everybody that they lose oral tolerance? So the tests are positive for everybody? And I said, well, actually, no. There's maybe two people out of 15, two people out of 20 that test negative when you do the proper testing. And just to recap really quick, most of you know this, the testing is called the wheat zoomer. There's no other test in the world like the wheat zoomer. Just like 25 years ago, it would take a room this, the size of this hotel room full of computers to have the computer power that this little phone has right now. It took a whole room of computers 25 years ago. The same thing is true with laboratory medicine. Technology has improved, and the only lab that I know of that is using the current cutting-edge technology in testing for sensitivity to foods is vibrant wellness and the test is called the wheat zoomer now here's a cool point they've got five different zoomers they've just come out with so you can get all six zoomers done the five new ones plus the wheat zoomer at half price and it's on our website and if marzi can find it she'll put the link in here for you um, so that before the end of this episode so that you can go and get the whole zoomer package and find out there's a lectin zoomer. For those of you that have read the plant paradigm, yeah, lots of hearts are going up right now. You bet. You bet. It's really a great deal. Uh, the Plant Paradox, great book. Uh, the problem with the book is that they think everybody has a lectin sensitivity. I don't agree with that. I think a lot of people do, and I think it's worth finding out. Well, there's now a lectin zoomer test, which is the most sensitive test possible to identify if you have a lectin sensitivity. There's the dairy zoomer. There's the peanut zoomer the egg zoomer, and then the neural zoomer. So there's six zoomers right now that are available, and they're 97 to 99% sensitive and 98 to 100% specific, 
which means they're right on the money every time. There's never been a lab test like that. Mayo Clinic calls it a new era in laboratory medicine because it's just like someone saying, if the technology was a room full of computers and we're in awe of what the room full of computers can, can do, now it's on your phone. The same thing. That's what it is in laboratory medicine right now. Anything less than that is good, most likely, but it's not cutting edge. In these categories, this is the cutting edge technology right now. There's nothing that compares. So get the Zoomers done and you find out once and for all where your problems are in terms of food sensitivities, and then the neural zoomer looks at your brain and the biomarkers to identify inflammation in the brain. It's all in the book, uh, You Can Fix Your Brain. It's all there uh, to read about, not the six zoomers. The neural zoomer's there, but not the six, uh, the four new ones that have just come out. Uh, so Marzi will put the link in here uh, if she can find it. So everyone gets a sensitivity to wheat. And when you cross the line of tolerance, no longer can your immune system tolerate this minor irritant because it's fighting so many other irritants that are coming in, it doesn't have the bandwidth to say, okay, you're okay, don't worry about it. It's like, no, you aren't coming in here anymore either. And now you make antibodies to wheat. And when you make the antibodies to wheat, it's permanent. You make something called memory B cells. I've gone over this in other Facebook lives, so I won't do it today but you make memory B cells, and so it's forever you have the sensitivity. So uh, everyone gets this at one point or another. Oh, Mary Holmes. Hi, Mary. Mary Holmes Sorensen. Hi. And uh, Suzanne from Toledo, Elizabeth, um, her story is sad and dramatic. Yes, Elizabeth, her story um, has a sad component to it, but she's a vibrant, dynamic woman that is out to change the world. And what she's talking about, and the way she wants to change the world, is to make everybody aware of functional medicine. That's her declared purpose. And she said, we're the only nonprofit in the world that's doing this. And she's right. And, you know, she's not making any money at this. This is really to give back. And she said in our Facebook Live that she's so grateful for what happened to her because it took her on this path, and she's he um, healthier than she's ever been. So that, that was really a remarkable thing to hear from Frank. Cindy, Philadelphia. Uh, Stephen Early. Hi, Stephen. Julia, New Jersey. Catherine in Washington. Cheryl O'Brien. Cheryl O'Brien. And spelled like my, hey, Cheryl in Florida. Wellington, Florida. Uh, so the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, Ken says, Ken's in Rome. And she says, can't do any more housework since I got your book. Just can't put it down. Thank you so much. Uh, please um, tell your husband you'll get back to the housework later if you need to. Thank you, though, so much. Okay, so let's get to today's topic now. That's the background. That's all the background about today's topic. When you go out to eat, the, um, the likelihood of hidden exposures is very, very high, hidden exposures to wheat. You can't do anything about it. You know, you've got first the resistance of most uh, restaurant personnel. You know, the, a waiter that says, well, is it an allergy or is it a sensitivity? It's like, what? And it's funny when they ask me that. And I just look at them and say, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. You know, no, you, you got to get it because you have to stop asking that question. And the poor guy, I'm in his face. I say, you have to stop asking that question because you are dissing the people that have gluten sensitivity, which can be more severe than celiac, and it can tear, take down their brain function. And they, oh, 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 okay, sir. And so they get it, right? So don't put up with any waiters or waitresses that give you resistance. You look them in the eye and you say, please ask the chef, is there any wheat in any of the things I'm ordering? Oh, no. So for example, in three of the last five sushi restaurants that I've asked the question, ask chef if he puts any flour in the sushi rice. The waiter and waitress say, no, 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 for I, I understand. Please ask, no, no, we don't. please ask them. And when they, uh, three times they said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Chef puts a scoop of flour in the sushi rice, makes it stickier. And so you think you're safe ordering a rice dish in a Japanese restaurant, but you're not because he put flour in there. 
I took my sister to a restaurant called J. Alexander's. It's a chain restaurant, nice upper, like, nice fish kind of place. And she ordered a piece of salmon. And I said, how is that prepared? And the waiter said, oh, it's on a wood plank. And we put some rice and some vegetables. Sounds great. Please tell the chef that we're gluten-free. Oh, there's no problem there. I said, I understand. But please tell the chef. Oh, sir, okay, it's not a problem. Tell the chef. So the guy comes back and he says, sir, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Chef puts a scoop of flour in the rice. All of our rice dishes have flour with them. And because it makes the rice a little stickier. So the uh, you never know. You never know if you're getting exposure or not. And I'll be tell you what to do about it. The next piece of information I want to give you is that they did an analysis of 15 different cultivars of quinoa. Quinoa is a great grain. It's high in protein. It's not an allergenic grain in general. People don't, have, not a lot of people have a sensitivity to quinoa. There are a few that do, but not many. It's an excellent grain, excellent. However, they looked at 15 strains of quinoa. They found four of them have toxic levels of gluten in them. But there's no gluten in quinoa. But yes, there is in four out of 15. Well, how is that possible? Quinoa grows in Peru, up on the plateaus uh, at elevation in Peru. Oh, no, but we, we get our quinoa from Colorado. It also grows in Colorado as of about 15 years ago. And some of the quinoa uh, cultivars that they've cultivated, they cultivated with grasses from the Midwest. And there's gluten in some of the grasses and there's gluten in some of the quinoa. So you think you're safe eating quinoa or giving quinoa to your children, but you're not. And you never know which quinoas are safe and which ones are not. You never know. There's no way to know. So, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? It's overwhelming. That's why we came up with E3 Advanced Plus. E3 Advanced Plus is the first digestive enzyme on the market to digest 99% of all hidden inadvertent exposures to gluten, to wheat, actually the top eight allergens to dairy and egg and soy and peanuts and fish, 99% of all of it within 60 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, nuts and fish was 90 minutes, but wheat, dairy, soy, egg are 60 minutes. Why is that? Uh, uh, just a minute, Marzi has just sent me a message, said there's some static going on. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, you can see them on the laptop. Stop fiddling. There's some statics breaking going on. Is your internet strong enough? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, I'm sorry if it's breaking up a little bit. I don't know what else to do here. Um, uh, I don't know how to enhance this, so I'll just continue and hope it, it gets better. Uh, Mary says, I forwarded your videos about gluten to my daughter every morning, pretty much toast. Yeah, I understand. Debbie from Canada is here. Hi, hi Debbie. So. The E3 Advanced Plus is the only enzymes on the market that digest 99% of any inadvertent exposures to, to gluten within 60 minutes. That's the key point because the sentries standing guard to protect you from any inadvertent exposure to gluten are just on the other side of the stomach in the small intestine. So anything that comes out of the stomach that may be gluten triggering the inflammation, the sentries get alerted, they turn on the whole inflammatory cascade. That means that you have to digest and break down any inadvertent exposures to gluten before it gets out of the stomach. If the acids and the hydrochloric acid can't break it down enough by itself, then these digestive enzymes are what take it and digest the rest of it. It's so cool. Every other digestive enzyme out there for gluten, some of them work, they're good and they work, 
but they take three hours, four hours, five hours to work. That's a problem because as soon as it comes out of the stomach into the small intestine, if there's any gluten, you activate that inflammatory response. Now with that inflammatory response, here come the antibodies. And if the weak link in your chain is your thyroid, you start making antibodies to your thyroid because of that inadvertent exposure to wheat. If the weak link in your chain is your brain, you start making antibodies to your brain, whether it's your cerebellum or your myelin, wherever it is. If that's the weak link in your chain when you're exposed to wheat. So the E3, Advanced Plus, you take them with you everywhere. Women carry them in their purse. Guys, some guys have a little pocket in their wallet. You can store a few of them in your wallet. I keep them in the glove box of the car. Uh, I keep them in my roller bag when I'm traveling so that I've got access to them. And uh, when I'm in hotels, I take a couple before I go downstairs to eat. And th that's the key point. You want to take these enzymes before you eat. Why? Usually you take digestive enzymes in the middle of a meal. That way, in your stomach, the enzymes are sitting inside this big bolus of food that you've been swallowing. The enzymes are in the middle of it, and they digest from the inside coming out, and your own enzymes digest from the outside coming in. But this is different. With E3 Advanced Plus, you take it before you eat. So it's at the bottom of all that food. So nothing gets through into the small intestine. Nothing. That's how. That's the only way I know to protect yourself. It's the only way. Uh, Dwin asks the question, when I eat oatmeal, it kills me. Major pain. Does that have anything to do with wheat? Same equipment or something. Good call, Dwayne. Um, when oats grow out of the ground, there's no gluten in them. When you buy oats off the shelf, there's gluten in them. It's contamination. The trucks that hauled the oat from the field to the manufacturing facility hauled wheat last week, and they don't clean the trucks. Or the facility that's boxing up the oats, same facility is, is boxing up wheat or bagging up wheat, and it's in the air, and the dust gets down into the oat assembly line. So that's very, very common. Most people, if they get gluten-free oats, they're okay. They, they can eat those, most people. We tell people three weeks, completely uh, gluten-free. And if you're not feeling better with, the, actually it's gluten, dairy, and sugar-free, if you read my book, The Autoimmune Fix. And if you're not feeling better, you, you, you know, it's gonna take a while to get well, but you should feel better. If you're not feeling better in three weeks, take oats out of there also. And if that doesn't help within a couple of weeks, you take all the grains out of there. Some people start by taking all the grains out. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means you have to eat more root vegetables and uh, uh, get more fiber uh, from vegetables, which is great for you. Not a problem. And, uh, uh, but usually we tell people gluten, dairy, sugar-free for three weeks to start with. So you should be able to eat oats. But some people are sensitive to oats, and you can't eat those. Some people are sensitive to tomatoes. It doesn't matter what the food is. Some people are really sensitive. Next question. Again, in, in uh, Rome says, how did you manage when you were at Lago di Garda? All of Italy is loaded with pasta and pizza. Oh, that's very good. Uh, my wife is a great cook, uh, just a fabulous cook. And if you follow us on the doctor.com and Marzi on her uh, Facebook page, Marzi O'Brien, um, she posts pictures of what she cooks and uh, sometimes pictures of me eating it, you know, just happy as can be. Happy as, uh, I don't know what analogy to give you, but, and uh, Ken, as you may know, most restaurants now can accommodate uh, gluten-free. They've got gluten-free pasta, and but, but you have to ask, do you have uh, separate pots? Do you have separate spoons to stir with? Because if you stir a pot of regular pasta and then the same wooden spoon is used for the gluten-free pasta, that's all it takes. That's all the contamination it takes because your sentries standing guard are so sensitive trying to protect you. Uh, Margie asks, is this available in Australia? Um, uh, you can order it through the doctor.com website and then it's just the extra shipping uh, in Australia. But no, it's not distributed in Australia yet. I would love it to be, love it to be, but it's not there yet. 
Tina asked, do you think gut health can cause other autoimmune diseases besides celiac? I've been seeing it for 13 years and also have hypothyroid and type 2 diabetes. I'm very strict gluten-free. Oh, absolutely, Tina. I'd suggest you read the book, The Autoimmune Fix, my book that came out two years ago, won a National Book Award. Uh, very proud of that. When you read that book, you'll understand the whole dynamic of how that happens. You bet. You bet. Wheat is a trigger for many, many different degenerative diseases. Patty says, my concern is my daughter, 19, who wants her doctor to take celiac off her diagnostic list during episodes of anxiety from eating gluten because she has so much brain fog and anger, she won't stay gluten-free. It's a horrible cycle, and they put her on antipsychotics and anti-anxiety meds. I fully understand. Fully understand. You know, Marcy and I um, spent four weeks at Swiss Mountain Clinic in Switzerland. And a number of people from um, uh, who watch us came over, uh, 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 a, a different group every week. And um, it's an excellent place to go, pretty much to detox for your daughter. Um, everything there is gluten-free. Marzi converted the kitchen last November to completely gluten-free. And the restaurant there is a destination restaurant. You would drive to that place just to go eat because the food is so good. And there's no weed anywhere in that place. And they're, they're the best in the world. They're the best clinic that I know of in the world for any type of health concern, whether it's stage three, stage four cancer, uh, MS, uh, anxiety, uh, antipsychotics, uh, whatever uh, condition you may have, they are excellent. They are a uh, they, they call it biological medicine, uh, it, but it's functional medicine, same principles, and they're just excellent at what they do. I'm really seriously considering a uh, faculty position there. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to go, well worth the investment. Uh, it's Swiss Mountain Clinic. Its name used to be Paracelsus Alronc, A-L-R-O-N-C. They switched their name over October 1st to Swiss Mountain Clinic because there's two Paracelsus. Oh, I see Marzi posted the Zoomer test bundles. The, uh, there it is. So you've got the link now uh, for the Zoomers. Uh, Leanne Scott joined. Hi, Leanne. Leanne's in Australia, our friend in Australia who coordinates the nutritionists over there. Hi, Leanne. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Debbie asked, hi, Dr. Tom. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and went off of gluten a year and a half, or for four, 1.5 years. The thyroid antibodies number hadn't changed significantly during this time. Still above 1,000. I recently have been eating wheat and wanted to see where I was with gluten and had Cyrex Ray 3 done. She's in Canada. I have nothing out of range but four that are equivocal. Wheat, IgA, alpha glidin 17, glidin transglutaminase complex, IgG, transglutaminase 6. What do I do with these results? Am I okay to eat gluten or do I have to be hypervigilant about it? Don't know. Debbie, that's a really good question. Uh, 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 Marzi just sent me a question uh, on text. It says, Car Carmelina asks, do, does E3 have to be refrigerated? No, it does not. You, you have to keep it below 120 degrees. At 120 degrees, some of the probiotics would start to die off. They're not dangerous or bad for you, but you'd lose a little of the potency of the probiotics. But the digestive enzymes still work just as well. So Debbie, to your question, um, for full disclosure, I helped found Cyrex. I was one of the uh, founding uh, strategists, if you will. I left them three, uh, three and a half years ago, no associations with them now whatsoever, so I can talk about them without any conflict of interest. Um, it's a great test, great test. The Wheat Zoomer is more comprehensive, but if that's not available, Cyrex is the go-to test in the world if the wheat zoomer is not available. And uh, I'm responsible for the equivocal column. We had almost two weeks of discussions on that concept because it's going to be normal and out of normal, out of range. And I said, you can't do that because the out of range is determined by buying the blood of celiac patients and making sure that your test identifies every celiac patient. And that's how you can prove your tests are valid and get certification with CLIA, the governing agency for that. And Cyrex, by the way, the law is you have to buy 40 samples of, of, of a disease, uh, the blood of 40 people with the disease, and your test has to be right on the money for them 
Uh, but Cyrex bought 120, and it's really expensive to buy this blood, but they did triple what the requirement is just to make sure. That's how vigilant they are at maintaining the highest quality. But to be out of range, they documented, yep, the, these are the reference ranges because we, we confirmed it with all these celiac patients. But to get a diagnosis of celiac, you have to have total bilis atrophy, meaning your gut has to be chewed up completely. And uh, you're at the end stage of the disease. Well, that's great to identify the disease, but what about people that only have partial bilis atrophy or the inflammation, which is the most dangerous one, is called Marsh 1. It's the inflammation before the degeneration of the gut occurs. That's where more people die and more people get sick. The studies are profound on that. And if we only are identifying the out of range for people who are at the end stage of total bilis atrophy, we're missing it. We're completely missing it for the people who are at the earlier stages. So I said, we need a column because the end stage out of range is two deviations past normal. That's the breakoff point. If they were two deviations out there, they're out of range. They're, and those were all celiacs. But what's, what about one deviation above normal? What do you do with that? There's nowhere on this current test to identify that. We need a column that identifies when people are out of balance, when they're out of range, when they're outside of normal, before they are at the end state. And thus, the equivocal column was created. Now, some doctors don't know this. And some, well, it's equivocal. It's not a problem. And you only got a couple of them. Don't worry about it. Nonsense. Nonsense. You have one equivocal, you got a problem. You got a problem. And Debbie, you've got four equivocals. I think it was Debbie. Wasn't that her name, Debbie? Uh, you've got four equivocals here. And so that's, that's a huge problem. And one of them is the glidin transglutaminase complex. That is the earliest marker of the mechanism going on that creates celiac disease. So glidin transglutaminase complex is on the spectrum of celiac disease, not non-celiac wheat sensitivity, rather celiac disease. So you're a celiac. You're just at the earlier stage of celiac. And if your antibodies haven't come down, and well, you've still got four um, different peptides of wheat that you've got elevated antibodies to. So you've got contamination in there somewhere. or you need to address your microbiome. My suggestion is you have a you have a session with one of our staff in clinical services, and you know go online to thedoctor.com and have a conversation with the clinical services department about what do I do? How do I get these antibodies to come down? Because you you may have to deal with the microbiome. You may have cross contamination. It might be your lipstick. It could be your thyroid medication. Do you know that um, uh, Synthroid? has gluten in it. So that could be where it's, there are so many places it could be coming from. You just have to dial down and find out where it's coming from. Um, Helen asks, can you get the Zoomer test in London? Unfortunately, no, not yet. Uh, it's only in the US and I don't know the time frame of when it's going to be available overseas. Uh, Sarah asks, what is that, Don? Okay, I don't know what that's about. Um, let's see. Uh, Let's see. Frustrating. No one takes us seriously unless we say it's an allergy. Yes, Patty, that's true. That's really true. Quinoa gives me diarrhea. Well, Mary, I've been, uh, I've gone through years and years of education, uh, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally. So I can sh tell you with complete confidence, don't eat quinoa. It gives you diarrhea. Don't eat quinoa. And that's true for anything that anybody eats that gives you a gut reaction. Don't eat that food. There's something that your body doesn't like about that food. Paula's in the house from Alaska. Hi, Paula. Dave said uh, he was explaining E3. Oh, thanks, Dave. Thanks for that. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll just keep moving on. The next study I'm going to talk to you about now is from the FDA. The FDA did, three scientists from the FDA, they looked at um, uh, 286 foods 
that were labeled gluten-free and 180 foods that were naturally gluten-free, like rice cakes or rice salt water. And they did two different tests on each food to see, is there any gluten in these foods or not? So the foods that are labeled gluten-free, 98% of them are completely gluten-free. And as an industry, that's really good. That's really good. But as a person, that's not good. If you're one of the people that get 2%, you know, 98% are gluten-free, but 2% of the label gluten-free foods are not gluten-free. And if you get that, you're off to the races, you're toast. You get the inflammation for, and the elevated antibodies anywhere from three to four or five months from one exposure. So 98%, that's what the FDA showed. And for the 180 foods that were naturally gluten-free, 24.7% of them were not gluten-free. 24.7%, that's one out of four, are not gluten-free. And you read the label and you think you're safe because there's nothing in there that's got wheat in it. But 24.7% of them are contaminated with wheat. And the ones labeled gluten-free, 2%, are contaminated with wheat. So what do you do? You take E3 Advanced Plus before every meal. Anytime you're eating anything other than vegetables and fruits, anytime you're having any grains, anytime you're having any sauces, I mean spices, my gosh, the spices have wheat in them. Uh, they did a study recently and they looked at the um, uh, uh, spices and did they have any gluten in them? And it was unbelievable what they found. Uh, I'm going to pull up the numbers for you here so that we can, we can identify this in terms of the, the number of uh, different spices that um, had toxic levels of gluten. Uh, here it is. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, special report. Oh, that's right. This was from Gluten-Free Watchdog. By the way, that is a great, great site to um, support. I think they're like... 30 bucks a year or something. And, uh, uh, but they, they're just remarkable for, for the work they do. Uh, it's Trisha Thompson. And um, she's a uh, uh, registered dietitian. And she's very much into the science and looks at the science. Uh, she looked at 63 spices and she paid for the test to be done on 63 spices. And what did she find? Of the 63 spices testing positive for gluten, oh, 63 tested positive. There are 268 samples that she looked at. 63 of the 268 tested positive for gluten. 25 of them was over 20 parts per million. That's a toxic level. That's what the government says is a toxic level of 20 parts per million. Uh, I, some people react to less than that, but that's the accepted uh, level uh, in most studies. And here's the spices that were positive for gluten. Clove, four samples, and it was 24 to 590 parts per million of gluten. Coriander, four samples, 33 to 260 parts per million. Cumin, seven samples, 31 to 49 parts per million. Fenugreek, two samples, 20 to 39 parts per million. Mace, two samples, 83 to 20,000 parts per million. Sage, one sample, 21 parts per million. Thyme, four samples, 20 to 26 parts per million. White pepper, one sample, 32 parts per million. What are you gonna do? You know, I mean, you got, we, we, the only way I know to be safe, there's two ways, one, Grow your own spices, but some of those you can't. You really can't grow. The other is you take E3 Advance Plus anytime you're eating and you're eating anything other than fresh vegetables and fruits because uh, there's not going to be any contamination that I'm aware of when you're buying your produce and cooking the produce yourself or you're having a salad. The salad dressing is another thing. But you take E3 Advanced Plus with every meal, especially those people like the person whose um, thyroid antibodies are still elevated. You're getting some exposure somewhere, somewhere in what's on the end of your fork or 
what's in your gut in terms of the microbiome. Somewhere you're getting that exposure and it takes detective work to uh, find out. Uh, Brian Metcalf is here. Hello from Ladakh. Hello, Brian. Uh, Mickey says the audio and the picture are very bad today. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know what to do about it. Can gluten cause an MS flare-up? Yes. Uh, yes, it can very easily. Uh, let's see. What else, do, what else do I want to answer here? I see uh, that we've got some answers for you about where to order the products. That's great. Where to order the tests. That's great. Uh, uh, Wesley says, my CRP is always sky high since age 25, and I think it could be gluten. And also I have chronic high. I've seen 10 different doctors. None of them think gluten. I think it's gluten. Well, Wesley, it's easy. Just do the wheat zoomer. You'll find out. Uh, you can work with our team or have your doctor order the wheat zoomer test. Do you know what triggers styes? Well, anything can trigger sty. Uh, uh, the doctor got one or two before every meal, especially if contamination to allergens may occur. Yes, that's correct. Okay, everyone, I guess there's a bad connection here. I'm so sorry for that. I didn't know. I never would have thought that. I mean, this is a nice hotel, uh, but uh, my apologies for that. Um, I will look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much for joining us today, and be well. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.